Hello Interwebs, I hope you are doing well and I am very excited to finally being able to get around to doing this video because I kind of promised it a little while ago and I have now just finally finished reading the first book in the um, the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, The Eye of the World. Now, as many of you already know, I am very excited to be reading this because I got into this series by watching the first season of The Wheel of Time, and I did reviews for every single episode of that show, but sort of my sort of perspective on the show was going into it as someone who had never read the books, didn't know any of the lore or world building around it, and sort of taking that show on its own terms as sort of a first watcher of what this world was going to be. And because of that, I went into the show very excited and going through the season, I saw many of you were excited for my perspective and how I was learning about the world. And I had a lot of fun sort of having that conversation with all of you about sort of like loving the Wheel of Time and sort of how it compares to the book without me knowing the book. But I also saw a big sort of frustration by a lot of people in the fandom with the show in terms of how the show was portraying this world and how it was building things out. And when I got to the end of that season, my perspective on the series, again, having not read the book, was that it was a solid show, by no means fantastic or grand, but I, I had a decent enjoyment of it and it was exciting enough and the way that the world was displayed to me was it was good enough and everyone else's fandom and excitement about the world was um, high enough that it got me, you know, excited to finally actually read the book. That being said, having now read the book, I can now kind of see and understand what a lot of people's frustrations were with the show having read the book first because I feel like having read this, and this is often the case with adaptations, but I think the show in particular really is egregious in this, is it takes a lot of the really cool ideas that are in this book and streamlines a lot of them, uh, kind of goes through a lot of them, skips over them, um, cuts some corners with like characters and beats and things like that, um, that are honestly part of what kind of makes this book a lot of fun. And the other thing too is it kind of genericized a lot of the really intriguing parts that resonated a lot with me when reading this book. And while I still kind of like the show, I think the show was decent, I still look back on it with like positive eyes and I'm excited to see what they do in season two, I now understand what the frustration was. And that's going to be a lot of what this review is and I do apologize for that. That's just sort of going to be my perspective on this having seen the show first. So my my like viewing of this book is kind of you know, always going to be informed by that order of things. But I will talk about this book on its own terms sort of later on this review. But I kind of want to do a little bit of comparing with things that sort of struck me having watched the show first and read the book. One of the first things, as I said, this they kind of genericized a lot of the things because one of the things that I found most fascinating about this was how kind of creepy and scary a lot of moments in this were. I think one of the biggest, earliest examples is the fades. The way the fades are described right from, I think, like one of the first chapters in this book is there these kind of people that you get this like aura of like hate and anger and disturbingness at. and so whenever our main heroes encounter one of them they just get this like feeling of dread and it's just this creepiness because they're described as kind of looking like normal people kind of like ring rake these sort of things except for a little less like um big and hulking and, and obviously villainous, but just this aura of hate and evil coming off of them. And then when you get to like the show, the the sort of fades are just these like monster things with teeth that are just another kind of monster alongside the Trollocs. And, and I was just kind of disappointed by that. And, and I think that kind of speaks to what Jordan does so well with this is he does a great job building atmosphere. Almost every page of this book, I, I just got a sense of like the atmosphere that these characters were in. And I deeply just loved it. And, and as a fan of horror, I love creepy things. The the horror bits were spark parts that spoke out to me. I think the second one, and I think this is probably uh, jumping from like what I heard in the fandom, uh, a lot of people can speak to that. The other point of that where the, that horror comes through was uh, towards the end of the book where the characters enter the ways, the sort of teleportation mechanism, and the way Jordan describes the ways is so intensely creepy. Just this dark, ethereal uh, world where you can't see light in front of you. Like I think he describes it as like light in front of you hits a wall that's just like a wall of darkness, um, like a literal wall. It's just so evocative. And you just get the sense of fear that these characters have, like our uh, Ogier character. Um, he just is, is just scared of being in there. And the moment where they, uh, you know, there's no sound or anything. And then the moment where they start to hear wind, 
and you realize like, oh shit, this is terrifying. Uh, it just goes from zero to 100, this like creepy answer to abject horror all in like an instant. And it just like, it just goes and takes you. And it was just so wonderful. And then I think back to that sequence in, in the show and it kind of almost reminds me of like Mirkwood in the Hobbit movies from the book because Mirkwood also was one of my favorite parts of the Hobbit book and it just was very creepy um, in the book and was kind of just like made this like kind of more generic thing for the movie even though the movie kind of took it in a more stylistic direction that I at least appreciated. In Wheel of Time, the ways is creepy but it's not altogether like all that scary. There are moments of it but it just felt a little, it didn't like bring out that abject horror for me that I, I, I really felt in Jordan's words here that uh, I, I think just really really, really worked for me. And the other thing too, that I really appreciate this book for, and I mean, given that it's 700 freaking pages, I, I would hope so, but it, it, there's just a really big sense of the world around the characters. You really get a sense of like, there's a whole community and a group of people here, like the names tossed out are consistent and constant and you get a real sense of the vibe. And I, I think like, there's a lot made of this book series being like, there's 700 pages of each book and there's 14 books and each book has like thousands of characters and there's like a compendium at the back of the book of all these different characters and names and that can like you hear that and you get like kind of like oh god this is going to be really kind of uh, a lot to deal with but I never had that problem going into this uh, to be honest with you I, I'm I'm holding up this book version of this and I've actually um owned ooh, ooh, as I drop it and, and kind of ruin my point here um I've owned this book version since I was in high school like before high school like it's actually honestly in pretty decent condition uh since for since I've had this book for so long but I actually didn't read the book version I actually listened to the audio book version um narrated by Rosamund Pike who played Moraine in the TV show um which I know there's a lot of people that love uh the older audiobook versions and I'm probably going to listen to those once I start with book two because Rosamund Pike hasn't done book two yet um so I'm excited to hear those versions but I was sort of curious because I was going to be forced to listen to the other versions to hear what Rosamund brought to it and she does a fantastic job like thoughts on the TV show aside Rosamund does a fantastic job narrating the book she she nails all the characters so so well um and so uh, listening to the audiobook, though, that can make it a little bit easier to get lost because you're sort of like, being strung along and you can't like stop and like be like, wait, who is that character? Um, despite that, like I, I felt everything kind of worked for me. Um, I, I understood who the characters were, where we were. So a lot is made of like this world being big and huge. And I'm sure it's going to get more complex as we go into future books. But I never felt... Um, too out of place or too confused about who was in what scene or who was talking to who. And again, that's a, a credit to Jordan. Um, I think my only negative, like talking about this book on its own terms, is a little bit of pacing issues. Uh, I did feel that there are a couple moments where the book drags a little bit. I think especially towards the middle where our characters kind of split off and they're on their own adventures. There are moments within that that I really liked. Uh, and there, especially some building out of stuff with like Perrin and Egwene, I thought had some really great stuff stuff in their own adventure, especially as we learn, like, uh, Eli we need Elias, who's the sort of wolf guy who guides Perrin into his wolf powers, who's completely absent from the show, by the way, and Elias was actually one of my favorite characters in the book, so I hope we meet him at some point uh, in the show. Um, but uh, regardless, uh, some of those moments did drag, like, some of the stuff with uh, Night and Eve and Moraine kind of got a little bit quick in there, and, and I actually think that's one area where the show did a little bit better um, with something like Lan and Night and Eve's relationship, and I think it's because, um, because we see the actors bringing a lot to it their relationship works a lot more for me when it builds up to the romance whereas in the book it kind of comes a little bit quick for me and I, I don't buy it quite as much that being said some of those moments are really very good uh rand and um uh, matt their adventure as like trying to escape different um uh fades and things like that and also matt falling into the uh sort of like this madness is evoked very well again perrin i think uh and Egwene, their story worked well well as they ran across the white cloaks again they're also exploring more of this world like we don't even get to um the Aes Sedai City uh, in this uh, in this book where we uh, got to get to it in the show. They sort of condensed that and sort of stuck it together, whereas we meet, like, Loghain and everyone in a completely different city in this book. Um, so you can sort of see the consolidation of the show. We don't even get to, like, meet the Aes Sedai and, and their sort of world uh, all that much. We only get to really encounter Moraine in this novel. Um, so uh, you can already see some of the condenseness of the book. I will say another area where I do think the show worked better for me than this book, again, sorry to do the constant comparisons, but um, I actually think the White Cloaks 
were more creepy for me in the show version. Again, I think that it speaks to the actor, the actor who played the lead white cloak in the show, was really just brought that, like, kind of, like, a, like um, devoteness to this religion that does a lot of harm and this sort of fan fanaticism, like this, this single-minded fanaticism that was just so confident in its own sense of, like, rightness uh, that he brought to it that really worked for me, whereas the book gets at that a little bit and it shows some of the contradictions in some of the in some of the white cloaks here and the um disregard they have for people outside of their viewpoint and sort of how they always place their own views onto others and and that sort of thing it, it does come across in here i think it, it is just personified i think a bit better in the show with the actor um and so that's one thing that i'm curious to see if the white cloaks uh you know are, are more better evoked in later books um not to say that they were bad here but i just again i'm making the comparison to the show maybe that's unfair to the book maybe it's unfair to the show um probably is both but um but it's just something i couldn't find um you know yeah, I couldn't help myself but thinking about as I was going through. I will also say there are some instances where it's sort of interesting to see how this book is very, like, 90s. Because this did come out, I think, like, the early 90s. And it's not by many means, like, super egregiously offensive in any way. I don't, like, I, I was actually expecting, considering that this book's world is built up on much more, like, uh, very gendered lines. I was actually expecting a lot more things that I was going to cringe at. I actually didn't have a lot of that. What I did kind of uh, find interesting is how the show sort of changed women's place. And, and, and in this book, while men are definitely sort of in an interesting place within this novel and definitely sort of um, in some cases sort of looked down upon uh, in this book. Uh, the novel actually does sort of like, uh, you know, have the central narrative for the men in the series like Rand being clearly the dragon reborn in this book. It's very clearly hinted at very early in, in the novel, whereas the book, or whereas the show sort of kept it a little bit more ambiguous about who could have been it, the, um, the dragon reborn, and actually have a little bit more uh, centering on women's point of views uh, in the show, whereas the book mainly stays with men for the most part in the book um and i sort of like just found that it's like oh that's just an interesting sort of like uh placement of men versus women in the show not just like the fact that women could also have been the dragon reborn in the show but just like the viewpoints that we got to see through i think a little bit more for women in the show uh than than the book did i think the book mainly stays with men and so while i was kind of surprised that I, there wasn't like lines in this book that i was like oh that didn't age super well like she titted along boobily as we see some men like describe women in in um some some novels that wouldn't be acceptable today um uh, that this novel doesn't have any of that, which is actually surprising because I kind of expected a little bit of it. Um, but it does still centralize men's viewpoints um, so far. Again, they might change in future books. I'm just it just was an interesting sort of note. Again, it's not like ah oh, I hated it. It's just sort of like oh that's that's kind of an interesting sort of uh, up update and and change from the book here. And this finally brings me to the uh, the last thing that I kind of want to talk about is that the world building of this novel I think is is so much better than the show. I think the show uh, did a decent job trying to bring up stories of the past and sort of give you a history of this world with like Moraine giving some history lessons in the show. But this book, I think, uh, I mean, it kind of gets more of a pass because it is like a story within a story. Whereas in a TV show, you kind of want to show everything visibly, vi visually. Whereas a book, you can kind of have characters go off and tell a story for a really long time. Um, very token-esque in that sense. Um, where are just like, oh, we're going to set the story and give you a history of another part of the world in this story. But you can kind of accept that because you're still getting a story. You're still reading. You're still getting a story within that. Um, as opposed to a TV show where you kind of have to stop the visuals dead to have a character explain a story to you. Um, and so uh, that being said, I think like we get a lot more of the history of the world and building out of the world and how powers work and how like channeling works and things like that. I think it's just more clearly explained here. But I think that that's just a difference of medium um, that I think was really interesting to see. And then there's also just some storylines that don't even get touched upon in the show that I'm curious to see what the show is going to do with going forward. Like, for example, Rand meeting the um, princess and the queen and uh, the prince in this book that did not happen in the novel. And then also a couple of changes like ages. They definitely age the characters up which is something they did for game of thrones too. um age the characters up because it would be weird if we have them doing some of the things like just we can buy it a little bit more for kids in a novel form whereas in a tv show i understand why they sort of age them up a little bit to sort of like uh, smooth over some maybe um questionable stuff that you if you put like a child actor into the show and then also allows you to not have to pay child actors um and deal with that sort of issue with sets and things like that um on, on a show um 
but all that's just sort of to be expected in the comparison. Um, again, I am sorry that I've done so much of a, like, here's the book, here's the show, uh, and my comparison between the two, but again, it's just sort of my perspective having come from the show into the book. At the end of the day, though, I really love this book. I think my only negatives are just, like, I think a little bit of pacing issues, especially towards the middle of it, but, uh, and that has me concerned for what I know is coming down the road with what I hear is, like, the slog towards the middle of this series. Um, so I'm worried if that pacing problem becomes a bigger issue. Um, we'll sort of see when I get there. But what I will say is I loved his sense of atmosphere. I loved his world building. I loved his characters. Uh, I, I, was, I was honestly just shocked by how much I loved this book. It is, the story is a little bit generic in terms of, like, it very much evoking that token-esque fellowship quest and defeat the Dark One. But you can, I can already tell that there's a little bit of subversion of that going on here, especially since this book series is going to be 14 books. I would expect that it's not going to just follow token one for one in, in here. And so I liking that there's a little bit of the subversion with Rand sort of questioning his place as this uh, savior character, especially towards the end. Um, all of it was really great. Uh, I think I especially loved the horror of it. I think there's just the, the, the tr this book is scary, and I really found that great because I so rarely get horror fantasy, and I want to read more dark fantasy because I feel like that might be a genre that I really love, just horror and fantasy mixed together, like high fantasy, not just like fantastical things in our normal world. Like high fantasy horror, I love. Like Moria and Mirkwood and uh, the the ways in here are some of my favorite moments in all of fantasy, and I kind of want more of that. And so I was very very pleased with it. Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on the Wheel of Ti uh, the Wheel of Time, the Eye of the World, Book One. Um, loved it. I'm very excited to continue on with the book series. Though I would, uh, I have a question for all of you. Do you want me to read the next book in the series immediately? Or do you want me to wait until the second season of the show and watch the season first and then continue with the book series? Ultimately, I'm going to make the decision that's best for me. I'm kind of itching to read the next book. Um, but I also have other books that I can and need to read anyways, too. So uh, if there's enough of you that are like, wait for the show and we want to hear that perspective, and then I'll wait the year or so for the, for the show uh, to come around. But that's up to you. If you're like, get into the book, we want to hear your thoughts on the book right away, I'll I'll be happy to do that too. So let me know your thoughts on that, but let me also know what your thoughts are on this book. I'd love to hear all of that down below. But beyond all of that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to go put this back on this shelf, and hopefully I've probably battered this book more in the past two minutes than I did in the entire time I've owned it. Uh, so good for it. Um, but anyways, I'm, I'm going to go put this back on its shelf. Mwah. Love you all, and ha live long and prosper.